Welcome to Top 10 World. Hit the subscribe button and click the bell icon before we move further. Time travel movies often make for the most mind-numbing sci-fi films with paradoxes aplenty. But it's those confusing temporal gymnastics that make them so much fun. Today with us at Top 10 World, you're going to travel between time for real as we're going to roll you back in time to show you how our Earth looked 100 million years ago, and then we're going to take you into the future to show you how our Earth will look in another 100 million years. If you could visit Earth like it was 100 million years ago, you'd not even recognize it. At the time, our temperate planet was a world of dense jungles and Sahara Desert-like widespread deserted areas which were ruled by dinosaurs. This period, the Cretaceous, has long fascinated scientists and laymen alike. For those who don't know about the Cretaceous, it's a geological period that lasted from about 145 to 66 million years ago. It is the third and final period of the Mesozoic era, as well as the longest. The geography of our Earth during the period referred to as the Cretaceous is barely recognizable to today's observer. At the time, the majestic Himalayas were yet to be formed. The rugged Rockies consisted of hilly areas accompanied by active volcanoes. Because the slow but inexorable process of continental drift has had considerable effect in the intervening eons, land masses then were indifferent, generally more equatorial positions. You'll be surprised to know that South America and Africa were physically linked. The sea level used to be higher due to which most parts of North America, Africa, and Europe were submerged. After the geological aspects, let's talk about life. There are two major ways of reconstructing the history of life on Earth, i.e. dating the rocks in which fossils are found and by looking at the molecular clocks in the DNA of living organisms. Research shows that the giant sauropod Argentinosaurus, believed to be the largest land animal in Earth's history, lived around that time. And also, the Cretaceous dinosaurs reached their peak in size. Our Earth used to be very hot 100 million years ago, and geologists have proposed that the altered position and topography of the continents accounted for the sweltering Cretaceous climate during that time. In general, the measure of climate appears to have been over 10 degrees Fahrenheit hotter than today. Evidence also suggests that the deep oceans were then about 20 degrees Fahrenheit warmer than today. At the poles, no evidence of permanent ice caps has been found. So just to conclude, if you lived 100 million years before today, your life would have been rather dull because you'll be sharing your climactically hot ecosystem with only dinosaurs. Fun fact! Recently, scientists revived 100 million year old microbes from the sea. Some of them can live in extreme environments where more developed life forms cannot survive. After the incubation process carried out by the scientists, some of the microbes began to eat and multiply. Now, let's jump to a rather brighter aspect of life, and by that we mean, let's jump 100 million years into the future. If you've managed to come this far into the video, do give us a thumbs up. It only takes one gentle caress of a button. Getting back to our topic. Well, we just coined the term brighter aspect because a layman expects the future to always be better than the present day. So let's find out. Even after moving to the future, we will not be able to recognize our planet. All the continents our world of comprises today will turn into giant land masses. Huge mountain ranges, widespread snowfields and glaciers Humans would have gone extinct for ages till that time, and only some deep remnants of them would remain. First up, let's talk about continents, because by 100 million years from the present, the continental spreading will have reached its maximum extent, and the continents will then begin to coalesce. Our planet, after facing huge storms, intense temperatures, heat waves, giant freezes, forceful winds, and droughts would be an altogether different place because Africa will underfoot New York and London would freeze at the North Pole. These pictures of Earth are not due to some global disaster, rather this is how nature works. This amazing process of remodeling will shape Earth into a completely different place. This remodeling process repeats itself after millions of years and is a part of a natural cycle that has shaped the Earth into its current state for the last 4 billion years. This process will continue until the Sun finally takes over and destroys the surface of the Earth once and for all. Today, we feel our continents are fixed in place 
and are perfect for human sustainability, but they are not. Well, that's one of our greatest misconceptions. Just look at this animation so you get to know how these incredible land masses have been on the move for billions of years. The collisions among these continents account for a continued process of construction and destruction as mountains fall and then rise again, land masses form and reform, and oceans disappear and appear again. After knowing about all these factors, we can claim that the continental movement is perhaps the mightiest force on Earth. Scientists suggest that cratons colliding with other continents form up a huge continuous stretch of land. It's called Valbara. Valbara's days are numbered as a rising plume of heat grows beneath it, and it can rip the world's first supercontinent into pieces. There are four fundamental scenarios for the formation of the next supercontinent. Novo Pangaea, Pangaea Ultima, Arica, and Amasia. Each form depends on different scenarios, but ultimately all are linked to how Pangaea is separated and how the world's continents are still moving today. Considering the fact that the world will no longer belong to us after a hundred million years, as humans are supposed to be a long time dead before 100 million years, or at most, animal life could survive for about 100 million years after plant life dies out. Since we've left an incredible number of our creations in the small 200,000 spans in which we've existed, and yet in these 100 million years, we have a little bit more time. So just like we managed to find out the fossils of dinosaurs and got to know about their existence, the next occupants of this planet might find out our remains and get to have an idea about your existence. Concrete, plastic, and aluminum are these materials that never existed before our age, and the existence of these materials would also increase the findability of our race for the newcomers. Lastly, let's talk about the detonation of the first atomic bomb on July 16, 1945. This explosion caused rare radioactive elements like plutonium-239 and its decay products, which would leave a chemical signature that our future explorers could simply not ignore. The layer of Earth that would represent our existence is called Anthropocene, and remember that we control its contents both in terms of variety and quantity. So guys, that was our take on how the Earth used to be 100 million years ago, and how the Earth will be 100 million years from now. Did you enjoy traveling through time with us? Do let us know which part of this video you found the most interesting. Give us your feedback in the comments section below. That's been it. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.